home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcasts. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science, to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. 
in four four years, years, this this could be be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to week number eight of the high school football season in the state of Indiana on Summit City Sports and SummitCitySports.com. We have a good one for you tonight here in Kendallville, Indiana, at the home of the East Noble Knights. The Knights hosting undefeated and state-ranked New Haven in a battle for first place in the Northeast Eight. Jim Measle here along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. New Haven entering tonight's contest in first place in the Northeast Eight. They have run the table so far, 5-0 and overall, or 5-0 and in the conference, and 7-0 and overall. East Noble comes in 4-1 and in the Northeast Eight, 5-2 and overall. A New Haven victory would give them the conference championship outright. An East Noble win would mean at least a two-way tie for first place. Leo tied with East Noble for second in the conference. And uh, Leo tonight in action as well as they're hosting Columbia City. So it's an extremely big night of football in the Northeast 8. And uh, Carson, let's mention right off the top here, for those of you who were hoping to see uh, Mylon Graham in action tonight, uh, well, disappointing news. Graham is not in uniform. He had a boot on his left foot, and he was not dressed. He was in street clothes. He was not dressed in a football uniform. He was in street clothes, and thus he will not play this evening. Yeah, certainly a a box office player, certainly going to be missed in this game. That's going to be a huge challenge for New Haven. Good thing is tonight it's going to be a lot of running. I was sitting on top of the press box before we got started here, Jim, and uh, it's uh, it's quite windy out there, so we're going to see a lot of running on the ground action tonight, and we'll see how the New Haven recovers from their top target being out for the night. Yeah, the wind is uh, coming out of the west at about 15 miles an hour. It will be a factor. It's blowing from the press box side of the field towards the New Haven sidelines. Uh, we've had a big change in weather here in the last couple of hours. Uh, remember those beautiful days we had earlier this week? Sunshine, temperatures in the, in the mid-80s. That's a distant memory now. Uh, reality has moved in. It was 63 degrees at about 5 o'clock. Then a cold front moved through. The rains came, the temperature dropped like a rock, and it will continue to drop throughout the course of this game. We're at 52 degrees right now. We're expected to get down to the mid-40s by 10 o'clock. Light rain is falling right now. It's more irritating than, uh, (laughs) whoa, be careful up there as guys are going up to the press box roof. I don't like to hear that sound, but um, no, it was was 63 degrees at 5 o'clock. We've lost about 10 degrees since five o'clock and it's just it's football weather carson it is and it, it, it's it's been an abnormally hot season so far i mean it seems like almost every week we were dealing with pretty hot temperatures we were here night one and it was blazing jim so a little bit of a change of pace it's football weather but that means october's here and the uh, action's heating up yes uh, just two weeks to go in the regular season the sectional drawings will take place on sunday and then by uh, sunday night We'll know who will play who and where in the opening round two weeks from tonight. Lots of folks again uh, sponsoring our live stream here on Summit City Sports and SummitCitySports.com. And Carson has the rundown. 
Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook page for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. Cali Automotive brand celebrating 70th, their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 of their brands at drivekelly.com. Tom Steel Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other automotive repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. At Onwiller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit OttenwillerContracting.com. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area from ages 5 to 18. Our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board together, we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning providing the best possible solution for your home or business. A system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expulging your criminal record or getting your driver's license reinstated, Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioga Cleaning and Restor Restoration providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial water damage and state-of-the-art disinfecting around the Northeast Indiana area. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu. Specialist in design, build, mechanical, and refrigeration. Visit tjwindustrial.com. That's tjwindustrial.com. Earn your edge this season. Parky Sports Medicine Edge Training Program maximizes your athleticism through personalized performance training to reach your goals, and you get to the next level. Visit parkysportsmedicine.com slash edge to schedule your free consultation. This broadcast is on SummitCitySports.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports and like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And we would appreciate it if you'd like to make a financial donation. Uh, just go to the tab on the website. It's very easy to follow. Even I can do it, Mr. Technology Challenge here. Uh, East Noble is there in their home dark blue jerseys tonight. And New Haven in their road whites. Again, the standings in the Northeast 8. New Haven in first place at 5-0. and East Noble and Leo both at 4-1. and one. Columbia City at 3-2. And, two. and uh, all of a sudden, the... Folks who root for the Leo Lions have a rooting interest in East Noble tonight. An East Noble win will make it at least a two-way tie, possibly a three-way tie. A New Haven victory gives the Bulldogs the outright conference championship. Leo is hosting Columbia City tonight. Also in the Northeast State is DeKalb at Belmont. Huntington North is at Norwell. In the Summit Athletic Conference, Carroll is at Northrop. Concordia is at Homestead. It's Snyder at Bishop Dwenger, and that's a big ball game there. Southside is at Bishop Lures in the Battle of Calhoun Street. <laughs> and uh, Wayne is at Northside. In the ACAC, a huge game tonight at Bluffton. What a matchup this is. As East Noble won the toss and deferred, New Haven will get the ball first. He got Adam Central, the number two team in the state in 1A, at Bluffton. Bluffton ranked number six in the state in 2A, and you think Bluffton is smarting a little bit after their loss last week? Adam Central unbeaten coming into that ball game. We have Heritage at Southern Wells, Jay County's at LaPel, South Adams at Woodland in the Northeast Corner Conference, Eastside's hosting Central Noble, Fairfield's at Lakeland, Fremont at Prairie Heights, Angola hosting Garrett, and West Noble is at Cherubusco. So we'll see this New Haven offense first, Carson, and even without Graham, this is still a dangerous bunch. It really is. I mean, once again, kind of state the obvious, but they're undefeated, Jim. And they've ran over a lot of teams, a lot of challenges that come in their way, and they got a lot to play for tonight. This is a team with ambition and uh, no bigger ambition than a conference title. The coaches, Kyle Boer for New Haven in his third year. Luke Amstutz for East Noble in his 12th year at East Noble High School. And we mentioned... New Haven's offense, East Noble's got a pretty good offense. Uh, New Haven is averaging over 37 points a game. East Noble's average over 36. The two defenses, uh, the slight edge going to East Noble, they've allowed 13 points a game. New Haven has allowed about 17 points a game. Bulldogs won last week at Belmont 32-14, but it was not a typical New Haven performance. They struck a little bit in that contest. 
And we are set to go here. Of course, the East Noble coming in with a lot of momentum. They, uh, they really played great football last Friday night at Columbia City, winning by a score of 35 to nothing. And we are set to go here at East Noble High School. This ought to be a good one. And this contest is underway. And the kick is coming down to about the 18-yard line, taken by Bates. Bates got away from one man, still dancing around. Now he has swallowed under at around the 16-yard line. It might be an opportunity there for Bates just to lower his shoulder. We talk about it's kind of, it's not exactly an advanced analytic, but it's certainly a part of the game right now. And you talk about yards traveled. He went a long way for a little gain. It looks like he fielded this one about the 13, Jim, and just kind of bounced out. He tried to do everything he could to sneak around everybody and ended up not getting, getting a yard. It looks like he traveled about 10 yards to go nowhere. All right, Donovan Williams and the New Haven Bulldog offense. Their first snap of the night from the 18-yard line. Williams looks to the air, and he tucks it under, and he's going to be dropped. That's going to be a sack at the 16-yard line. A loss of two. Yeah, this East Noble defense knew that they were going to be in for a tough challenge tonight. They have a lot to prove and a lot on their plate, Jim, and looks like we're getting a hurry-up offense, but I mean, they just bull rushed him, and they came right through, and he tried to escape and just couldn't quite do it. Bates, the lone setback. We have three receivers for New Haven lined up here to the near side on second down and 11 from the 17. And a fumble on the snap from center. And now it's ad lib time. Williams throws and he has a receiver. Washington, and out of all that, they're going to get a first down. My goodness, you talk about backyard football. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite, favorite brand right here. Put it in the playbook. <laughs> Why not if it, if it works? This one, he takes this one down, Jim, and just slowly but surely, he kind of got behind it and just kept going out. And eventually, with guys on him, the safety bit, Jim, that's the thing, was the corner bit and thought he was going to scramble it. He didn't go out, and just like that. Officials have a discussion, and they say first down New Haven. And the ball is spotted at the Bulldogs' 35-yard line. So a near disaster for New Haven. But boy, talk about getting thrown a lemon and making lemonade. First down for New Haven at their own 35. Now one receiver each side. Man in motion is Washington, who just made that big play. And it's a handoff. Bates up the middle across the 35 up to about the 38-yard line. They run between the tackles and get three yards. Yeah, nothing too fancy there. Jim, the classic run up the middle. See how much clock New Haven wants to use tonight. And I mean, if you've looked at your outside your window, you know it's, it's going to be wet. The, the, the ground's wet. The ball's wet. It's going to be difficult for them to make plays tonight, but you just got to kind of hold strong, Jim. Right down here below us now. On second and seven, another running play between the tackles. Bates spun around and managed to get a couple of yards to the 40. That'll bring up third down and five for New Haven. Looks like he kind of rolled over a little bit of the pile there. You don't see that terribly often, but he just kind of, that's what we, some good old uh, yak, some yards after contact. Just spun off the linebacker there and kind of kept rolling. He got an extra yard out of it. Now, an early third down right here. We'll have to see how this Bulldog offense, they're going to go into the single setback, Jim. Line the gain is the 45. Third down and five. Three receivers to the left. Donovan Williams, the senior quarterback, takes the snap. Calls his own number. Now rolling to his left. A bit of a delay, and he's going to be brought down well short of the first down. I thought he was going to call his own number. And then he looked like he was going to pass, and then he decided to run the ball. Yeah, quite a bit of hesitation here. He had, it looks like he had Washington out there on the flat waiting for the screen, and it never came to him. And he kind of, once again, tried to make a little bit of a backyard football play, but just had nowhere to go with it. You don't want to hesitate in those situations, Jim, and I couldn't quite see what the coverage was downfield. Now, well, Graham does the punting charts but obviously he's not in there tonight and there's the punt by Jared Suarez 
Suarez gets off a high short kick and it goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. The wind will definitely affect the kicking game tonight. That's a punt of about 28 yards, no return. And East Noble goes on offense for the first time. They will start at their own 30-yard line. No score, 8.51 to go in the opening quarter. First place on the line here in the Northeast State, Jim Meeso along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. Matt earning his combat pay tonight here on military night. Up there in the foul weather. Beautiful ceremony before the game. They had a gentleman in the uh, color guard who was 103, and he survived uh, Pearl Harbor. God bless his heart. All right, first down for the East Noble Knights at their own 30-yard line. No score, and here's a running play. Reimbold across the 35. A nice chunk for Reimbold on his opening carry. Eight yards. Brought down by James Hardy the fourth, number 85. I was just about to say, I hope you like Ryan Bull action because you're going to get a lot of it tonight. Here they go. No huddle again. We've seen this before from East Noble. Ryan Bold looks to have a first down. He does. They're going to spot him down around the 42, maybe the 41, but he's beyond the stick. First down, East Noble. And again, no huddle. From the East Noble Knights, eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. Here's Brazel throwing for the first time tonight. He has a man. That'll be a first down. And he's still alive across the 45 to the 42-yard line. That'll be a game of 17 yards. And that's Keegan Corbin with the reception. Yeah, how about just a nice little route here Jim that's a nice little curl route you see Rainbow carries the ball again and the middle part of the line doing their job this is a very good East Noble offensive line anchored by Zach Lighty Joseph Sorrell James Miller Grant Patti Ian Smith they get the job done and here is Brazel throwing on second and five it's intercepted a flag comes in Let's check out the penalty flag. The interception made by Turner, Jamarcus Turner, a junior, six foot, 145 pounds, but a penalty flag is down and it's pass interference on New Haven. Let's take a look here at the replay to see where it comes in here. I'm curious right there to see and it looks like Turner kind of got a little bit of a push off there. That's what I'm wondering if they decided to call. So interference is the call. Our referee is Jack Kokenauer, gentleman with the white hat tonight. And uh, the interception obviously will not count. And East Noble with an early Christmas gift. 10-yard mark off, first penalty of the game, and that's the third first down for the Knights. This drive started at their 30. It's to the New Haven 28 now. That kind of weather. 7.38 to go in the opening quarter. No score. And if, oh, now they <laughs> move it up five more yards. That's 15 yards, yes. Got to get the, pe the proper penalty yardage there. So let's put the ball at the 22 and make it first down and 10 for the East Noble Knights marching the ball on their opening possession. It's a running play and another chunk. That'll be a first down to the 11-yard line. Looked like Crail carried the ball. First down number four. Ball is at the 11. They can still get a first down without getting a touchdown. The Knights matriculating the ball down the field. Another running play inside the 10 to about the 6. And it was uh, Crail again carrying the football. Number 32, Dylan Crail, 5'9", 205, junior. He got five on that play. Yeah, they're just torching him downfield right now. They're just really getting to that front seven. Right now the dark shirts are pushing the white shirts back and things not going well for New Haven. And now a offside penalty being called on the Knights. 
And East Noble will move closer to the goal line. Half the distance puts the ball at the three. Well, Kyle Boer can't like the way things are starting here for his New Haven Bulldogs. I bet you say so you'll say down south. Somebody's fixing to get chewed out when they come to the sign lines here. Ball is at the three. It's second down and about a yard for the East Noble Knights. A great chance for them to take the lead. It's Crail off the right side, and Crail is short of the goal line, but appears to have enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal for East Noble. Well, we did a game between East Noble and Leo earlier this year. The Knights letting some points leave on the field, but not this time. Crail, give that man six points. Touchdown, East Noble with 6.19 to go in the opening quarter. Nothing fancy about this one, Jim. Just punch it right in. You got a good offensive line and a really good running back. That's Crail's eighth touchdown of the season, by the way. He's got eight touchdowns. Reinbord's got seven. Mosley's got three. There are three main running backs. Sprague on for the extra point. He's been pretty much automatic this season. And it's booted. It's in that direction. And the kick is good. Bang. New score on the board. 6-19 to go. First quarter. 7-0. Favor East Noble. We're back in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Miso, along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. 6.19 to go in the opening quarter. The East Noble Knights have grabbed an early 7 to nothing lead on their opening possession. The Knights march at 70 yards for the opening score. As Dylan Crail took it in from a yard out. And now we await the kick. No onside kick, unlike uh, earlier this season when we did a game here. And it's returned to the 27-yard line by Turner, who had an interception overturn on a penalty on that East Noble touchdown drive. Bulldogs will start at their own 27. Yeah, that little push-off really starting to make a big difference right now on the scoreboard. Do you think if they had that push-off, Jim, they might be in a completely different place, but... Now it's just up to your offense. You can't really trust your defense to keep you on the field forever. Well, that Bulldog defense had better tighten up. Uh, the blue shirts were pushing the white shirts back on that possession for East Noble. First down for the Bulldogs. They're down 7 nothing, And a running play off the right side and a nice chunk on first down for Bates. About five yards to the 32. New Haven has 28 yards of offense so far. East Noble with a total of 52, and we have a shaken up player, unfortunately, for New Haven. It's one of their linemen. And boy, the injury starting to mount up for the Bulldogs. That's number 52, uh, Javion Hagler. He's a junior, 5'10, 190 pounds, and he has to go off. Looks like he's favoring his left arm. We want him. We don't want to make any uh, guess as to what type of injury that might be, but hopefully he'll be all right. Three receivers to the left for the New Haven Bulldogs. The ball is at their own 33-yard line. We'll call a second and four. Williams calls his own number, gets the first down, and he's up to about the 40-yard line, a pickup of seven yards in the play. First down for New Haven as they try to fight back here after falling behind seven to nothing. 
kind of did that thing that Jalen Hurts likes to do, a little bit of Donovan McNabb too, just kind of st took a step back, lowered his shoulder like he was going to pump fake it and just called his own number. Williams, a good-sized young man, listed at 6 feet, 205 pounds. Two receivers to the left. As we go under five and a half minutes to play in the opening quarter, East Noble on top, seven to nothing. And Williams looks to throw on first down, throws short. It's caught by Hardy. He's out of bounds around the 45-yard line. And we'll give him five yards and make a second down and five. Once again, New Haven offense just not doing anything too fancy. Just sending the tight end off here, Jim. A little on an out route. Well, Williams with some eye-popping numbers offensively. He's cooled off a little bit, but entering tonight's game, 87 for 127 for 1,181 yards and 16 touchdown passes. It's Bates again. He squeezes through. A couple of tackles, and is right at the marker. He looks to have a first down. He does. Now you mentioned him cooling off just a little bit, Jim, but unfortunately that's what happens when you lose your number one target. Certainly something that's impacted the offense quite a bit. For those of you who are just logging on, Mylon Graham is not available tonight for New Haven. He was in street clothes with a boot on his left foot. Under five minutes to play in the opening quarter. East Noble 7, New Haven nothing. Oh, look at that move, but East Noble's defense stayed home, stayed disciplined, and Bates got only a yard. Yeah, they just stayed there, and the line didn't fall back, and then it succumbed to the push, and then just like that, it's only a one-yard gain. Clock continues to move, 4.25 to go in the opening quarter. Three receivers to the left now for New Haven. East Noble's on top, 7-0. Second and nine from the Knights, 49. Williams hands it off. It's Bates again. Bates across the 45 to the 44-yard line. A gain of five. Third down and four upcoming. And the tackle was made by number four for East Noble. That is uh, Scott Alexander, a freshman. That was Bates' sixth carry of the night already. Line the gain is the 40. Third down and four for New Haven. Two receivers to the left. Will Williams put it up? Nope, they'll run it. It's Bates, he'll get the first down. New Haven is getting some nice chunks in their running game right now. Yeah, I think that's what they want to do. I think they want to rest their defense, keep Ryan Bold, especially off the field, which would be ideal for everybody wearing purple in the building tonight. So the Bulldogs are putting together a nice drive here. 3.17 to go in the opening quarter. East Noble leads 7 to nothing, but New Haven has the ball at the East Noble 39-yard line. First down. Two tight ends in there now. Play action fake. Williams throws over the middle and it's nearly intercepted and now caught at around the 32-yard line. Boy, that ball was bouncing around like it was in a pinball machine. But finally, number five, Chris Stewart, 6'1", 215 senior, made the catch. Sometimes the world just on your side. That's actually a fairly good read. He's out there on an island but has three defenders around him, Jim. And it kind of just, the linebacker made a really good read on it. It's not going to count, Carson. Uh, penalty against New Haven. So another Bulldog penalty at an inappropriate time. Uh, I think he said it was a legal man downfield, if I saw that signal correct. Uh, that's always a tough one. You think about the lineman just yeah. kind of. So the gain is wiped out. Five-yard penalty puts the ball back at the 44. That's probably one of the most frustrating penalties as a football fan. You get a nice play, and you find out your lineman was three yards downfield, and you lose all your momentum. Third penalty for 23 yards against New Haven. Ball is back at the East Noble 44, first and 15 for New Haven. Williams calls his own number, comes to the nearest side, and he's brought down from behind. 
brought a man with him for a couple of yards, and they will mark him down at the 38. That'll be a gain of six. Second and nine upcoming for the New Haven Bulldogs. Yeah, I just really like what they're running right now, Jim. I mean, when he calls his own number, it's helping him out a lot, and then it opens up the passing game, especially the play action. I'd like to see them in in integrate that a little bit more. 2.15 left in the first quarter. Clock continues to run. East Noble on top, 7-0. Three receivers to the left on second and nine from the Knights' 38. A pass into the left flat. Caught by Washington. Washington is going to be swallowed under by a sea of blue at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, really trusting. We saw Washington. That's kind of what, what his role's been tonight. He's just kind of going out for those screen passes. But this time just had nothing going. Immediately when Williams takes the snap, he kind of looks over and they're looking for the blocks downfield, but the blocks just get off and it looks like Turner couldn't hold his block there, Jim. And then just like that, he had a safety run down out of it and Williams had nowhere to go. Three receivers to the right, line the gain for New Haven as the 29. Third down and 11, play clock's down to five. It looks like New Haven not quite on the same page. And Coach uh, Kyle Boer has to burn a timeout. So let's step aside. A minute 20 left in the first quarter. East Noble leads 7-0. We're back in a moment. This has always been here. Um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting. And I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana. The talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on... Welcome back, everybody, to East Noble. Jim Miso here along with Carson Watkins and our cameraman, Matt Jackson. Out of the New Haven timeout, the Bulldogs facing third and 11 from the East Noble 40-yard line. Knights on top, 7-0. Line the gain is the 29. And Williams has time. He wants it all near side. It's caught. That'll be a first down at the 28-yard line. As the reception was made here on the near side by Turner. Jamarcus Turner moved the sticks. They convert on third and 11. Yeah, Washington knew he wanted to go to him. He sent it up where he could get it. He Beat his defender there on the curl route, Jim, and kind of got up for it and got that extra yard he needed. Under a minute to play now in the opening quarter. New Haven keeps the drive alive with that conversion on third and 11. Three receivers, two to the left, one to the nearest side. Ball is at the Knights' 28-yard line. It's a running play for Bates. Bates to the 25. He's at the 20. He is close to another first down. He's into the red zone. Brought down right at the first down marker at the 18-yard line. And the officials are looking it over. Did the guy in the white hat said first down? Not yet. There it is. First down. You got to give her that red cash in. First down. <laughs> well, they're in the red zone now. What a drive for New Haven. Clock is down to 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. First down for the Bulldogs at the East Noble 18. And there goes Bates again. He's been a workhorse here in the opening quarter. Flag comes in as Bates is brought down at the 15-yard line. That will stop the clock with 13 seconds to go in the first. And let's check out the penalty flag. It came in just as Bates was going down. You hope no uh, nefarious activities were taking place at the pile. Got uh, all the officials converging here. And it's against New Haven for an illegal shift. And New Haven is penalized for the fourth time in this game. This will move the ball out of the red zone to the 23. First down and 15 now for the Bulldogs. And the guy in the white hat says start the clock. Let's see if New Haven can get this playoff before the first quarter clock runs out. 
You're down to five seconds, four, three, two seconds, one second. Nope, they're not going to snap the ball. First quarter comes to an end. After one quarter, East Noble seven, New Haven nothing. We're back in just a moment. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. We start the second quarter at East Noble. East Noble with a 7-0 lead, Carson, but uh, the Bulldogs are driving, and uh, they had a big play here on third down and 11 moments ago. Yeah, that's kind of the defining play of the drive at this very second. Decided to go with the curl route, a deep curl route there. Got the extra yard he needed, and just like that, that drive, another brutal ending after a penalty. For New Haven, might have killed all their momentum, but they do got another first and long here after that Legal shift. Well, they're behind the markers now. They change ends of the field. Ball is at the East Noble 23, first and 15 as we start the second quarter. Williams rolling to his left, has time. Now rolling to his right, running out of time. And down he goes at the 29-yard line. Great job by the Knights defense as Williams could not find anybody open. And Connor Lines finally said, come to me. Brought him down for a sack back to the 29-yard line. Jim, I mean, the offense really, the offensive line did all they could. They kept pushing the back there, kind of, he went back. And you talk about holding on to the ball for too long. Nobody was open. I'll give him credit there. But at that point, Jim, we always say live to see another down. You, you got to take that one and flush it, get out of the tackle box, and throw that one away. Second and 21 for New Haven at the East Noble 29. Here's Williams with time, throws on the far side. He's got a man open at the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Give that man six points. Touchdown, New Haven. And that's why they're the number three team in the state, folks. They play through adversity and they make a big play. I got to eat my own words here, Jimmy. Kind of had a little bit of a mistake there not throwing the ball away but how about this they decide to go and they de they bait the safety they run one of the receivers in and take him out on the outside on a wheel route and he catches it and stride and just like that we're an extra point away from a tie ball game that was a johnny washington the six foot 180 senior with the touchdown reception and he beat his man cleanly you can smell the toast up here the kick is up and the kick is good and a new score on the board with 11.09 to go until halftime. New Haven 7, East Noble 7. We are back in just a moment. Welcome back to East Noble. The Knights and fans are really a little stunned right now as New Haven facing a difficult situation. They hook up on a big play to tie the game here, Carson. Yeah, this looked like a drive that was over second down after an illegal shift and taking a six-yard sack. But just like that, they get the wheel route there after baiting the safety inside. And just like that, got a tie ball game. 29-yard touchdown pass. Donovan Williams to Ajani Washington for Williams, his 17th touchdown pass this season. 
nine of those scoring strikes going to Washington. So New Haven has fought back to tie the game, converting a, a third and 11 to keep a drive alive. And then on second down and, well, third down, wasn't it? Second. It was second. That's right, because there was a penalty. That's right. It was second and 21 when uh, Williams and Washington hooked up on that touchdown. Just when it looked like East Noble was going to get out of uh, Dodge after uh, New Haven had driven into the East Noble red zone. Bishop Dwinger leads Snyder 7-0 in the first. Also in the Northeast 8, a game that everybody's watching besides this one. Leo 7, Columbia City nothing. That game is in the second quarter. And uh, both of those games also on Summit City Sports this evening. The kick comes down to about the 10, up to the 30, right up the middle. And a nice return out to about the 35-yard line. Good return there, Jim. You like to see that in special teams, set your offense up with a good field position. Kind of just broke through. I mean, the blocking, whoever's coaching blocking here at East Noble might, might need a pay raise, Jim. Didn't quite see who returned that. It was either uh, Reinbold or perhaps Hatton. It was Reinbold, I'm told. Thank you. Bear with me here on these East Noble numbers tonight, folks. You can probably see uh, they're not the easy, easiest to read with these uniforms. Here's a running play. And boy, that New Haven defense rising to the occasion. As that's a gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven. And that was Reinbold carrying the ball for three yards. A lot of time to strategize when your offense puts together a 15 play drive there and go into the half. So a lot of time to talk to your coaches, figure out what went wrong in that first drive. And that's what they're gonna to try to do here. I mean, they're, they're battling for a lot. Second down and seven for East Noble at their own 39 yard line. Game tied, 7-7. Seven, seven. Another running play, Reinbold carries a tackler with him and he is awfully close to the marker. Corin Harris brought him down. He's the leading tackler for New Haven. 48 entering this ball game, including eight behind the line of scrimmage. Harris also has five quarterback sacks this year. They are short by a yard. And it's Reinbold. Pretty good number of the call on third and one for East Noble. He's got the first down to the 50. So it's first down for East Noble just at the midfield stripe. Under 10 minutes to play now in the opening half. Game tied 7-7. Creole has a one-yard touchdown for East Noble. Williams to Washington, a 29-yard touchdown pass for New Haven. On first down from the 50. Branzel hands it off. And it's Reinbold again across the 45 to the 43-yard line. Talk about sacrificing oh. for your team. I beg your pardon. Crail carried the ball. 32 instead of 12. So it's second down and three. Now I'm told it's Mosley. <laughs> uh, I'm with All right. Those numbers are a little bit hard to decipher. Black jersey, a blue number. Second down and seven from the 43. It's Mosley again. First down. They're getting chunks again on the ground. New Haven has not been able to figure out this East Noble rushing attack yet. First down number seven for the Knights. 8.45 to go in the half. East Noble marching right now, trying to get the lead back. They spot the ball at the New Haven 37-yard line. First down for East Noble. Three receivers. Brazos only thrown the ball once tonight. On first down, end around to the 35 to the 30, all the way down to the 25 yard line. That'll be a first down. Yeah, just getting creative with it. I mean, when I mean, your offense is picking up yards like this, do you really need your quarterback to throw too often? He, he's one for one on the night though, so perfect passer rating thus far. Ball is at the New Haven, 26-yard line. East Noble 
putting together a real nice drive here. Reinbold carries the ball. Reinbold to the 20, still fighting for yardage. Down to about the 18-yard line. Reinbold picking up nine yards right there, and man, he is running hard. Out of the uh, no huddle again, running play to the right side. And that'll be a first down to the 15. East Noble is in the red zone looking to break the tie. Yeah, the defensive coordinator right now for New Haven is just in a predicament because he's trying, I mean, you have all these corners out here and safeties. You don't exactly want to stack the box. You know immediately when you stack the box, they're going to audible to a pass and leave your cornerbacks on an island and one-on-one -on -one coverage. But, man, they're having trouble stopping that run. Unofficially, Reinbold has eight carries for 40 yards. We're coming down to seven minutes to play in the opening half. First down, East Noble. That's Crail off the left side. Crail to the 15, down about the 12. Crail has 22 yards on five carries. Reinbold, 40 yards on eight carries. Mosley, 23 yards on three carries. They've only thrown the ball once. That was a completion for 17 yards. Another running play off the right side. You know, if it's don't, don't fix it if it ain't broke. <laughs> and they're inside the 10 now. Crail carried the ball that time. Third down and one. Six and a half to play in the half. Another running play. Crail up the middle. That'll be a first down, and he is down to the five-yard line. This is old school football right now. This is, uh, this is how he played in the 60s and 70s. And New Haven's defense looks gassed right now. There's no huddle offense. I mean, could you imagine being out there right now, Jim? Just running down the field, and no matter what these chunk plays are. First down from the five. And give that man six points. Touchdown, East Noble. Looked like Michael Mosley took it to the house. From five yards out. East Noble back on top with 6.15 to go in the first half. Really good draw play here, Jim. Just decided just to take it himself and kind of never even went down, just brought a tackler with him. And just like that, another lead change. Mosley's fourth touchdown of the season. Sprague is on to try the extra point to make it a seven-point lead. And waiting for the snap. Bit of a high snap, but it's down, it's up, and the kick is good. And a new score on the board with 6.15 to go in the first half. East Noble 14, New Haven 7. We're back in just a moment. Sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Welcome back to East Noble, everybody. Jim Miso along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. 6.15 left in the first half. The East Noble Knights with a very impressive 65-yard touchdown drive capped off on a five-yard carry by Michael Mosley. They lead now 14-7, to and the kickoff goes out of bounds. Oh, they didn't want that to happen. Now New Haven has a choice. Will they make them kick it again or take it at the 35? I mean, that one landed at the 25. I, I like the odds game here. Make him kick it again. I think the center's out there, I think. Well, I guess they're just going to stick with the 35. It does not look like they're going to make the Knights kick it again. 
So New Haven once again behind on the scoreboard. East Noble 14, New Haven 7. It's not very often here in 2023 that New Haven has trailed in a game. They have wins over Northrop, Lourdes, DeKalb, Leo, Norwell, Columbia City, and Belmont. And um, big challenge here for New Haven now. They have to overcome the injury to uh, Mylon Graham and this... Uh, and they have to win on the road or they want to win an outright Northeast A championship. First down from the 35 for New Haven. Quick pass over the middle. Oh boy, that was almost 65 yards. Uh, Johnny Washington came very close to taking it to the house. As it is, it's a pickup of 11 yards. Man, you talk about risking it all right here, Jim. Just decided just to uh, kind of blase with it. Looks like they're going to run the end around. He just takes the snap and I mean, makes the play action and immediately has it out there. First down for New Haven at their own 46, under six minutes to play now in the first half. East Noble on top, 14 to seven. Here's Williams getting away from one guy and he finds Hardy and he's brought down at the East Noble 47 yard line after a gain of seven. Williams a six out of six. I really like what he's doing with Harding right now. Just getting him on those out routes. He's open every time. 5.20 remaining in the first half. New Haven has two timeouts left. East Noble has all three other timeouts remaining. Second down and three for New Haven at the East Noble 47. Williams hands it off. And Bates has an opening. Bates into the secondary and he's down to the 35 yard line, check that, that's not Bates, that's number 21, who sneaked into the ball game on us. That is Anderson. Adrian Anderson, uh, junior, five, 760 pounds, so Bates getting a rest, and Anderson showing he can run the ball hard. Gain of 12 and a first down for New Haven. First down number eight for the Bulldogs. East Noble has 11 first downs. Ball is at the East Noble 36, first down for New Haven. They have the football trailing 14-7. It's Anderson again, he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two. Somebody forgot to block that guy. Holy smokes, he came in there clean as a whistle. Loss of two on the play. Second down and 12 now for New Haven at the East Noble 38-yard line. 4-10 to go in the first half. He just snuck right through that line. I think that was Crail. It looked like 32. Again, our apologies, folks. East Noble wearing uniforms tonight that are uh, blue numbers on blue shirts, basically. Whoops. Well, flag comes in, and that will be a penalty on New Haven. False start, that's their fifth penalty for 33 yards. And this will put the ball back at the Knights 43 and make it second and 17. Well, it was second and long when they hooked up on the touchdown pass earlier. Look at you, Jim, always look at the positives. <laughs> <laughs> Under four minutes to play now in the half. Bulldogs have been guilty of shooting themselves in the foot at times in this opening half. Balls of the 43, second down and 17. Williams rolling to his right, throws, and it is caught inside the 40 at the 38. Starts the antenna receiver, and that'll be a gain of... I don't think there's a gain. Are they it calling that incomplete? Looks that way. At first I thought he said caught, but now it's ruled incomplete. So that's the first incomplete pass for Williams tonight. He hit his first six passes. Six of seven for 51 yards. Line the gain is the 26. 3.28 to go in the first half. Third and 17 for New Haven. Williams. Throws back to this side. They try to set up a screen and did not work. Fourth down, New Haven has to punt the ball away here on fourth and 17. 
You know, last week, New Haven blocked a couple of punts, but so far in this game, East Noble has not been forced to punt. Yeah, Jim, I mean, they're just getting... Uh, that's, that was exactly... I mean, they started off the drive really well. They got a couple of chunk plays there, and then just like that, it all kind of unraveled quicker than you can expect. And, uh, this is a golden opportunity right now for the Knights. I mean, if they score here, they get the ball at half, Jim. Look out! The kick is blocked! And that ball is loose. It's still loose. It's rolling towards the East Noble bench. Out of bounds it goes. As Suarez had the punt block. What we mentioned about New Haven blocking punts last week. This week, the foot, the shoe's on the other foot. I mean, they just came in. They had that. They had the three guys right there looking to do it. That ball pinballed for a while. <laughs> Good job, Matt, trying to keep keep track of that one. Oh, boy, you talk about a momentum shifter, Jim. Well, now East Noble, with this offense that has been unstoppable here in the first half, has a short field, and they have a great chance to open up a two-touchdown lead on the number three team in the state. These Knights really playing well here in the first half. They start at the New Haven 49, and, of course, they keep the ball on the ground. They've only thrown it once tonight. As it was Reinbold carrying the ball. That was his ninth carry so far. He picked up a couple, and New Haven forced to try and stop this East Noble offense that continues to go no huddle. Running play to the near side. Boy, how about a shout-out for the East Noble offensive line? They're, they're just moving the white shirts back right now. Simple as that. They may or may not be a Parkview Sports Medicine player of the game candidate. The ball's at the 43. Third down and four. Three receivers. Running play to the right. Student body right. First down with room to spare to the 35. Reinbold carries it for eight yards. That might have been, that's one of the biggest plays of the night. I mean, if they stop them there, they have to go to the punt, and uh, let's say we're going to get a timeout here. But if they had the punt there, give, I mean, at least gives New Haven some hope. New Haven has to take a timeout here to give the defense a rest. 2.19 to go in the first half. We'll keep it here during the timeout. East Noble 14, New Haven 7. Again, for those of you who are logging on late for New Haven. Unfortunately, uh, Mylon Graham is unavailable tonight. He's in street clothes with a boot on his left foot. And uh, this East Noble offense, extremely impressive. You know, they have now, by my count, let's see here, 15, that's 22 plays on the ground for East Noble, one pass. And on the ground, unofficially, I got East Noble with 100 yards rushing. I mean, they're just dashing that front seven, as I mentioned before. You think about it, Jim, like they just cannot stack the box because they, they had to pay with it with their arm, but I mean, it might just be worth it to risk it. If you trust your cornerbacks with man coverage. All right, here we go. 2.19 to go in the half. Knights have all three of their timeouts left. Plenty of time for them. First down at the New Haven 35-yard line. And it's Crail off the left side. He gets a couple of yards to the 33. And that'll bring up second down and eight. Jesus Diaz making the tackle for New Haven. Crail 30 yards unofficially on eight carries. Reinbold 54 yards on 11 carries. Did you say New Haven's at five penalties, Jim? Yes, we have. And that's costing, especially think about that pass interference in the first. Brazel's going to throw it on a play action, and he will throw the ball away. So he could not find anybody open downfield. That'll bring up third and eight. That was only his second pass of the night. Good job there. I mean, Brazel to get out of the pocket and throw that one away. Timeout East Noble. East Noble calls timeout, so we'll step aside. Knights on top, 14-7. We're back in just a moment.
update from Leo, second quarter. The Lions on top of Columbia City, 14 to seven. Here at East Noble, let's reset things with 146 to go in the first half. East Noble leads New Haven, 14 to seven. Knights just burned a timeout. They have two remaining. New Haven has one timeout left. Out of the Knights timeout, they face third down and eight at the New Haven 33. And now a flag comes in before the snap. And if this is on East Noble, this will push him behind the chains. A legal substitution on the Knights. And that's their first penalty of the game. Mm. Bad time for it. Also, you forgot the uh, kick out of bounds. When not exist. Well, that's right. But there wasn't any yardage assessed. Yes. So that's uh, the first yardage penalty there you go. against East Noble. There All right. Go. Thank you. No problem. All right, line the gain is the 25. Now the Knights face third and 13. Will this affect the play call here, this five-yard penalty? Let's go to the air again. Oh, it's some trickeration. They're going to get the first down. Crail. Whoa, what a big play that is for East Noble. 18 yards. Some more backyard football. I mean, they did the double handoff. You don't see that very often. Once again, making me eat my words. Thought they had to go to the air. How about not? They they faked the entire defense to go to the right side, and then they just pushed everyone with them. Jim, clock down to a minute twenty-three. Plenty of time on the play clock. Another running play off the left side. A missed tackle. New Haven not tackling very well. That defense looks tired. And they got nine yards on that play. I'm tired watching them. All right, one minute to go just at, or just a little bit above. Biggest plays of the game right here at this point. Another running play and another first down for East Noble. It'll be first and goal at the eight. Reinbold carries it for three yards. Diaz made the tackle again for New Haven. Boy, this rushing attack for the Knights. Can't stop them. Under a minute to play now, 48 seconds. They want to score and leave as little time as possible on the clock for New Haven. Ball is at the eight, first and goal. Creo off the left side, got away to the five, to the pylon. Give that man six points. What a sensational individual effort by Dylan Creo and East Noble. Opens up a two-touchdown lead. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was down, Jim. You talk about a spectacular play. How about here? Crail gets the handoff and goes outside. He runs into the back of his lineman and gets wrapped up a little bit, but breaks out of it and just keeps going outside. My goodness. What a game-defining play. That's the type of play that, if you're New Haven, could just break your heart. Sprague's extra point and tip now is in the air, and the kick is good. You know, I tell you what, this uh, this Sprague, he is the automatic toll. Uh, 32 seconds to go in the first half. We'll keep it here. Eight-yard touchdown for Crail, his second score of the night. It's East Noble 21 New Haven seven, and if they announce this score in Leo, the Lion fans will be going, yay! Oh, they're gonna announce it. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> I they're bet they're gonna... watching. I bet they, they got their smartphones hooked into uh, Summit City Sports and SummitCitySports.com right now. Don't use up all your data, folks. Hopefully you got Wi-Fi. <laughs> or a stick, right? Yeah. I haven't... I... I will say I'm very blessed. I'll, I'll, I'll I will leave the technology talk to you. I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> I'm one of those people at the grocery store when the self-checkout, oh. please place your item in the bag. I am. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bring my own bag. I have a nice uh, Indiana Pacers tote bag. And so I, uh, I usually carry that around. Then I, I put my groceries and like, hey, where's your bag? It's like it's right here. <laughs> Look at my receipt, I swear. I, no matter what generation you come from, I think the self-checkout's pretty inferior. Yes, it can be. Well, the that'll be an interesting locker room for New Haven at halftime. 
Uh, East Noble has opened up a 21 to seven lead, 32 seconds to go in the half. Yep. Line drive kick. It's picked up by one of the up men and he returns it across the 40 to the 42. So New Haven has one timeout left as the kick was returned by Farrell, Malik Farrell, number four. He's a senior, 5'10", 175 pounds. And what does New Haven want to do here? I was just going to say, I, Peyton Manning hates this, but I say start throwing the ball downfield. I mean, if you get picked, you get picked. I think East Noble would be content with taking a knee, especially if you flip the field. But I want to see what kind of Arn Williams has here to send his receivers out. I, I, I mean, if you can, you can make this a touchdown game again, you, you can still be in it and change momentum before half. I, I, I say throw it, but. They got 27 seconds and one timeout. Flags come in. There was movement before the snap and another self-inflicted penalty by New Haven. This will be their sixth penalty for 38 yards and make it first and 15. Remember, East Noble won the toss and chose to defer, so they will get the ball to start the second half. And the Knights, unless something crazy happens here in these final 26 seconds, will take a Big Mo into the locker room at halftime. I, I, what do you tell your team if you're Luke Amstutz and you've played so well? Just go out and do it again. That's going to be a short speech. For the Some, something, something, put your, keep your foot on the pedal. Something, yeah. something, don't get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, something, 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 something. <laughs> Williams, and he throws one deep down the middle. That's up for grabs. It's picked at around the 20-yard line. East Noble will get it back. It's like what I said. I mean, I'm content with throwing a pick here, and that's exactly what they did. They decided to see how far his arm could take him. Step back, had a good amount of time in the pocket, got hit as he threw, and launched it downfield, but just met the safeties. And if, we'll see. I mean, they might give the ball to Reinbold again, see if anything crazy happens, and flip this game on its head. But uh, I, I, if I'm East Noble, I think I'm just taking maybe a one-yard run. If not, taking a knee and just heading to the locker room. Don't don't risk anybody getting hurt. Riley Biddle, 5'11", 170 sophomore with the pick as Williams uh, threw it deep. And Biddle, Johnny on the spot. They'll run it. Reinbold, Reinbold covers up that football, gets about a yard. That was his 14th carry of the half. And that will be the last play of the first half. The East Noble Knights getting a big round of applause from their fans as they head to the locker room, but their job is only half done. One half of football in the books, your score. The East Noble Knights 21, the New Haven Bulldogs seven. Jim Measle here along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson on Summit City Sports and SummitCitySports.com. We'll step aside for a little bit. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being 6'3", 6'4", 
to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. And I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSN Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952, when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. Welcome back, everybody, to East Noble High School. Jim Measle here, along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. It's halftime. The East Noble Knights on top of New Haven, 21-7. to We're watching a performance from the East Noble High School marching band. Unfortunately, we're having an issue with our boom mic, I understand. So 
Uh, we won't be able to give you the the uh, full treatment of enjoying the East Noble Marching Band here at halftime. We apologize for that. And uh, we wish this uh, group the best as they continue on with their season, getting down to crunch time for high school marching bands. Yes, uh, their, uh, their tournament, I guess you can call it, is uh, coming up uh, very shortly. Of course, uh, the marching band finals at Lucas Oil Stadium are really a sight to behold. For sure. I was just about to say, everyone, pretty much everybody who's been on the field tonight is looking towards Lucas Oil right now. Well, um, no, New Haven's got to be uh, a little bit stunned right now. They came in here unbeaten, ranked number three in the state. I don't think they trailed at all this season. I don't know if they were behind in that Leo game. They I, were. They were. Okay, so that was the only game that they have been behind in up until tonight. And East Noble has just... Uh, well, to sum it up, Carson, they have just taken it to them, and they delivered a big punch there in that first half. Yeah, I mean, they're just gashing their defense. I mean, nothing more to it. I think, what you say, two pass attempts right. on the night, Jim. I mean, they're just simply, I mean, gashing them. And so it's going to be up to the defense now, really. The offense has, hasn't had a little bit of an issue scoring, but overall, like I said, I mean, if the defense can get off the field. There's nothing else the offense can do. But, I mean, they're just being gashed up the middle right now. So it's, it, that's, it, that's it. I mean, there's nothing more, nothing less to it. The offense is outside of a couple self-inflicted wounds. They've played fairly well. I mean, I'm not going to – a lot of defenses have had trouble containing this unit from the Knights. So we'll see where this goes. All right, let's give you some out-of-town scores here. In the Summit Athletic Conference scores that we have, these are all in the second quarter. Carroll, 35, Northrop, nothing. Snyder has gone ahead of Bishop Dwinger, 14-7. to And also in the second quarter, it's Wayne over Northside, 10 to nothing at Chambers Field. And let's see, in the ACAC, South Adams has a 21-0 lead over Woodland. Uh, we mentioned Leo leading Columbia City, 14-7 at the half. Only score we have from the Northeast Corner Conference halftime, West Noble, the number 12 team in the state in 3A. Uh, they'll go to a running clock in Turtletown as West Noble leads Cherubusco 41-0 at the half. Here, it's 21-7, East Noble over New Haven. The scoring plays in the first half. The Knights got the only touchdown in the first quarter with 6.19 to go as Dylan Crail scored from a yard out having off a very impressive 70-yard drive for the Knights. 7-0 East Noble after one. In the second quarter, New Haven tied the game with 11.09 to go in the half as uh, quarterback Donovan Williams hooked up with a Johnny Washington for the ninth time this season. It was Williams' 17th touchdown pass of the campaign, 29 yards. The point after was good, and New Haven had fought back to tie the game at seven, but... East Noble had answers and plenty of them after that. They got the lead back with 6.15 to go in the half as it was Mosley, Michael Mosley, scoring from five yards out. The point after by Sprague was good. 14-7 favor East Noble. And then right before halftime, perhaps the key play of the game, the Knights blocked the punt. They got the ball in midfield and uh, managed to matriculate it down into the end zone. Crail scoring his second touchdown on a sensational individual effort. Uh, New Haven just could not bring him down. He broke about two or three tackles as he managed to get into the pine line on the far side. It was an eight-yard touchdown. The point after was good. That came with 32 seconds to go. And East Noble taking momentum into the locker room. They're up 21-7 here at halftime. Some of my stats, again, these are unofficial. Uh, East Noble, I had them with 151 yards rushing in the first half compared to 53 for New Haven. New Haven at the edge in passing, 51-17, but again, the Knights only threw the ball twice. So total yards, 168 for East Noble, 104 for New Haven. New Haven was penalized six times for 38 yards. East Noble penalized once for five yards, actually twice because they had a kick that went out of bounds, but there's no yardage in that situation. First downs, East Noble collected 14 of them, eight for New Haven, and New Haven committed the only turnover of the half, an interception, no turnovers for East Noble. So 21-7 is your 
halftime score, East Noble over New Haven. Leo is winning their game at halftime by a touchdown over Columbia City. So again, the situation as it stands in the Northeast 8. New Haven needs to rally to win this game and win the conference championship outright. If East Noble wins and Leo should win their game, then we'll have a three-way tie for the championship in the Northeast 8. Well, again, we'd like to thank uh, our numerous sponsors for helping us bring you tonight's game here on Summit City Sports and SummitCitySports.com. They include Big Eyed Fish. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Automotive celebrating their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 of their brands at, at drivekelly.com. Tom Steele Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They will help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. At Ottenweller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit OttenwellerContracting.com. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 through 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together, we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you, whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping you get your driver's license reinstated? Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration, providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfecting services throughout Northeast Indiana. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online sf.edu. Specialists in design, build, mechanical, and refrigeration. Visit tjwindustrial.com. That's tjw-industrial.com. Earn your edge this season. Parkview Sports Medicine's Edge Training Program maximizes your athleticism through personalized performance training to reach your goals and get you to the next level. Visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash edge to schedule your free consultation. We are awaiting the two teams to come back onto the field. We'll get the second half underway here in about five minutes or so. Again, halftime. Your score is East Noble 21, New Haven, uh, New Haven 7. 21-7, East Noble over New Haven. Next week, the two teams wrap up their regular seasons. New Haven will be hosting Huntington North. East Noble will be hosting Belmont. And again, the sectional draws will be conducted on Sunday at the IHSAA headquarters in Indianapolis. Sectional 19 should be very interesting. You look at those teams in there, and we could see East Noble and New Haven again come sectional time. Uh, there's uh, six, five or six teams who have a legitimate shot in that sectional to uh, move on to the regional round. So, again, it's 21-7, East Noble over New Haven. Why don't we step aside for a couple of minutes and come back with uh, the second half action in uh, two minutes here on SummitCitySports.com.
Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more. Can't Whenever you're ready. And welcome back, everybody. The two teams getting ready for the second half here at East Noble. The Knights on top of the New Haven Bulldogs, 21-7. Some updates out of town in the Summit Athletic Conference halftime now. Snyder leads Bishop Dwenger, 21-7. Carroll leads Northrop, 35-0. That game has moved to half. Uh, let's see, DeKalb with a 35-0 lead over Belmont at halftime in the Northeast State. Some scores now from the Northeast Corner Conference. East side 21-7 over Central Noble. Lakeland has a 13-0 lead over Fairfield. Fremont leads Prairie Heights 14-0. And earlier, as we mentioned, West Noble leads Cherubusco 41-0 at the half. East Noble will get the ball to start the second half as they won the toss and deferred. And uh, Luke Amstutz probably telling us, guys, do it for another 24 minutes. Kyle Boer, I bet, had an interesting halftime chat with his team as uh, they are facing quite an obstacle now. This is uh, some adversity I don't think they have faced all season long, maybe aside from that Leo game when they let a 20-0 lead get away and finally won it in overtime in one of the more exciting games in Northeast Indiana this season. I think it's imperative for New Haven to get a stop on defense right off the bat here. If they allow East Noble to go, to go down and score, it might be lights out. Yeah, and you talk about uh, satisfaction. And this has got to feel good for the Knights. You know, they're five and two. They're coming off of their first 500 sub sub 500 season in almost 20 some years. And you know, right now they're leading the number three team on the state. Had two really tough losses. One of them at home, if I recall correctly. You know, they just got to be thinking, just, you got to finish the job. And I, I, if there's anybody else in the stadium I feel for, I mean, I can't imagine what Mylon Graham has to be feeling on the sideline right now. Oh, he's got to be sick to his stomach. Absolutely sick watching his team battle like this and fall behind by two touchdowns, and he can't do anything about it. Well, New, New Haven and East Noble, they've had a good rivalry over the years. Last 35 years, according to the John Harrell football website, East Noble has a 21-13 edge, but New Haven beat them the last time they played. Last year, 37-14 uh, was the final score. East Noble with wins this year over Lures, Huntington North, DeKalb, Norwell, and Columbia City, and losses to Snyder and Leo. And uh, I'll tell you what, we, we talk about this East Noble Offense, yes, it's very good, but this night's defense has really developed here in the last couple of weeks. They pitched a shutout last week at Columbia City, and they've only allowed seven points thus far tonight against a high-powered New Haven offense. All right, New Haven will be defending to our right. East Noble defending to our left. Jeremy Nunez Peraza, a senior, 5'755 pounds, ready to kick it off. East Noble's anticipating something. They got seven guys in between the 50 and the 45. Nope, no onside kick. It's down to about the 23 yard line. One of the up men has to take it. And a nice return working here out to the 46. And a short field for the Knights offense to start the second half. Onside kick or no onside kick. Looks like they're just gonna. <laughs> Get that yardage anyway. It's really good play there to start off the half. I mean, oh. 
What was that song that we heard in the pregame? When it rains, it pours. Yeah. That's how it's feeling right now for New Haven on this wet, blustery night. I think I think that was uh, Alexander Phillips who returned that second half kickoff. Looked like 22. And you know, folks, if it's not broke, don't fix it. East Noble runs the ball. Uh, gain of four in the play. So spot the ball at the midfield stripe. Got a t-shirt toss going on. The vibes are great on the East Noble side right now. Second and six from the 50. Another running play. Across the 50 to the 47 yard line, a gain of three. Again, New Haven's defense has to come up with a stop right here. Reinbold, the ball carrier once again. By our count, his 16th carry of the night. Line the gains to 44. East Noble again going no huddle. Crayle, Crayle still fighting, got the first down. They had him stop behind the line of scrimmage. My goodness. <laughs> He just doesn't quit. Keeps the legs driving. And a first down for East Noble. That's huge. Keeps the momentum going. You know what else is huge? Go ahead. 27-7, Leo. And that'll be a penalty on New Haven. And you can see the frustration on the Bulldogs' side right now. Yeah, I mean, it just keeps piling up. I really wonder how many folks at the Leo football game rooting for Leo are watching on their smartphones right now this game. Things have changed, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> Used to be the transistor radio you listen to an out-of-town game, but now you, you got the smartphone or the iPad going. Oh, here's a pass on first and five. And it's caught down around the 15-yard line. And that pass was caught by Trish. How about this? Showing the arm off now. Brazel steps back and the line protects him. He has a clean pocket. And how about it? Randy Moss would be proud. Got on top of him. And they're in the red zone. Trish with the reception. 24 yards on that pickup. Knights run it for one of the few times tonight. New Haven defends it. That'll be a loss of one, second down and 11. Under 10 minutes to play now in the third quarter. 21-7, East Noble. They're in the New Haven red zone looking for maybe the knockout punch right now. Three receivers on second and 11 from the 15. Brazel takes the snap, throws to the near side, caught! Give that man six points! Touchdown, East Noble! Hasn't been too many times that the, uh, there's a flag, I think. Illegal man downfield. So wipe out the touchdown. Oh. And, um, you know, the gentleman that just made that comment, please go to the IHSAA website, click on uh, want to be an official, and sign up. <laughs> If you think you know so much about football, sir, put the stripes on, get a whistle. You know, I, I just get so tired. You know, we have this lack of officials, and not only here in Indiana, but in neighboring states, because of, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So, okay, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> the penalty wipes out the touchdown, just the second penalty on East Noble tonight, and that may be number three upcoming. Yes, it is. Oh. So just when it looked like East Noble was... Put this one away. Yeah. They get a touchdown taken down on a penalty, and now another penalty pushes them back to the 26. Remember, they lost a yard on first down, so now they're facing second and 21 from the New Haven 26-yard line. And here is a trickeration. It's Trish. Can he get the corner? No. Cut down from behind by Chris Stewart 6'1", 215 senior and that'll be a loss of three 
I thought they were about ready to run a Kendallville special, Jim. And uh, decided well, just to... Uh, East Noble kind of getting away from what has been successful. Uh, getting a little bit too cute here, I think. The ball is back at the New Haven 29. It's now third and 24. They are well behind the markers. Now they do have Sprague. If they can get enough yardage here, they could try a field goal. A field goal would make it a three-possession game. 8.45 to go in the third. Here's a little flip pass to the near side. Can they get enough yardage to give Sprague a chance? It's a gain of about seven. Corbin with the catch. He got about six or seven yards. So the ball is spotted at the 23. This will be a 40-yard attempt for Sprague, and I don't see him out there. They're staying out there. No, not in the, this wind is still blowing no, no, pretty no, no, good. No, 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 no. Here he comes. Well, hey, shows you how much I know, <laughs> which is very little, by the way. I'm with you there. 41-yard attempt. The coach is just trying to fool us up here. From the near hash, it's in the air, and it's going left. No good. Wynn took it left, and Chris Stewart back there to help out the officials, signaled that it was no good. So New Haven stays in the ball game, folks. 7.54 to go in the third. It looked like East Noble had the knockout punch, but a penalty took down a touchdown, and they get nothing after getting into the red zone. Yeah, really tough here. Let's, I think I still have that replay. Let me check here. Uh, let me see. I think I have it here. You see right here, look at about the 15-yard line there. You see the linemen running up, ready to block downfield. That's where they got the call. That is really tough. And like I said, that's just a really frustrating penalty. But he starts running up field like he's running a route. You see right there. Right. And that's going to be, that might be, uh, that might be important later on. Show that replay to the guy who yelled, that was terrible. <laughs> it was not terrible. That was an excellent call by the Stripes. It was a tough call for East Noble, but it was the right call. First down for New Haven at their own 20. A quick pass as it's caught by Washington, and Washington is down at about the 23-yard line. That'll be a gain of three. Let's see if they open up the passing game a little bit now. We saw what kind of arm William has, Williams has. Obviously, it wasn't the accuracy he wanted. He threw a pick, but I mean, if you got deep deep targets, you might as well try them. I mean, well, they got it's, trying to, it's trying to empty the bank. They got five receivers in the game now. Four on the right. Williams swings it here tonight. Oh, it's incomplete. Whoops. A relatively simple pass, and he missed connections with Washington. So now New Haven facing third down, Carson. Well, now both teams, if anything, they do have a penalty that they have to look at. And, you know, if whatever team comes out in the loss column tonight, they're going to sit there and think, oh, well, if we didn't get that pass interference and or if we didn't get that legal man downfield, things would be different. So, I mean, tensions are got to be getting high on both sidelines right now. Obviously, East Noble feeling a little bit better, but don't never count out New Haven. Line the gain of the 30, third down and six, three receivers. And Williams fires. He's got an open band. It's bobbled and caught by Starks. Starks is still loose. He's in East Noble territory all the way down to the Knights 47-yard line. And here comes New Haven. Yeah, what a really good play here. Just to, I mean, he bobbled it, Jim. It looked like he was going to go down. I mean, he hit, went up for it, bobbled it, had a lot of space, and kind of went outside and snuck right between two defenders. And now... New Haven's turn to kind of push this pace a little bit. The ball is in East Noble Territory at the 47. First down for New Haven. A long way to go yet. East Noble on top, 21 to 7, but the Bulldogs are trying to turn momentum in their favor. They run it for three yards to the 44 as Bates carried the ball. He's got 39 yards on nine carries unofficially. Now Krill's getting tackles, man. He, he's doing everything out there tonight. He is definitely a candidate for player of the game, I would think. Uh, we'll see who wins this game. But if, uh, if East Noble wins. Yeah, if, if East Noble wins, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I might give him my vote already. Second down and seven from the 44. Williams throws. And it is caught for a first down to the 36-yard line. 
move the sticks. The reception made by Kunberger, Braden Kunberger. He's a junior, 5'7", listed as 120 pounds. And New Haven has the ball at the East Noble 36-yard line. Under six minutes to play in the third quarter. 21-7 East Noble, three receivers to the right. Williams calls his own number and is across the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Williams picking up three yards there. Brings up second down and seven. Boy, East Noble looked like had the door slam shut. Yeah. But, you know, when you, sometimes when a team that looks beaten, they get that last-second call from the governor. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just amazing how things can turn on just one play or one penalty. Second and seven from the 33. New Haven putting together a nice drive here, which started at their own 20. And Williams fakes the handoff. It's cut down to the 30-yard line. He is short of the first down by three yards. That'll bring up third and three. They're probably in four down territory here. Yeah, I'd say so. The line the game's to 27. Five minutes to play now in the third quarter. New Haven trying to get it back to a one possession game. It's at the East Noble 30 yard line. Third and three. Will Williams call his own number again? Slot back on the right side, one setback. And it's a play action fake. Williams throws. It is caught for a first down inside the 25 at the 23 yard line. Move the sticks again. Gain of seven. The reception made by Washington. Certainly some uh, blood pressure starting to spike here on the uh, East Noble stands. Gotten a little quiet here in Kendallville all of a sudden. First down and 10 at the 23. Bit of a high snap, but they're gonna get a nice chunk on first down across the 20 to the 19. And now that New Haven offensive line starting to establish themselves. Four yard gain for Bates. They're into the red zone. Ball's at the 19, under four to play now in the third quarter. It's imperative for New Haven to get some points on this possession, the way that clock is moving. Second down and four, second down and six rather, second and six from the 19. And it's Bates again, cuts it back to the inside. He's going to be stopped about two yards short of the first down. It'll be third down. Ball be spotted at the East Noble 17-yard line. 34-7 Leo. So Leo's on their way to the victory over Columbia City. Looks like the line the gain is just short of the 14. So here we go, big play. Coming down to three minutes to play in the third quarter. Third and three for New Haven. Let's see if Williams calls his number on this play. He hands it off to Bates. Bates is stopped and it looks like he has enough for a first down to where, where they're marking him at. He's got it, I think. It's at the 14. Nope, they're giving it to him. Guy in the white hat says, first down. Well, probably not like that, but <laughs> if it was Red Cash and he would, that's the second Red Cash and reference in one night. All right. It's all right. No Madden references yet. I'm still waiting for your first Madden reference. <laughs> Ball's at the 14. That's your specialty. New Haven in great shape to get it back to a one possession game. Williams into the end zone. Incomplete at the goal line for Hardy. You know what I like about this game, Carson? Everything. It's been a hard fought game. And in like, unlike in some games we've seen this year, no, um, no chirping. No chirping afterwards. All right. Everybody's playing hard. Well, I was just actually about to mention, I'm not sure. I think New Haven was looking for a call. One of their coaches was uh, down the sideline, a little bit flustered. Can't see anything too egregious. No, nah, that's 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 nothing. All right. Let him play. <laughs> Second down and ten from the 14. Bit of a high snap. Bates 
cannot find any room. A flag comes in now. Bates is down to the 12, but let's check out the penalty flag. It stops the clock with 2.19 to go in the third quarter, and wouldn't you know, holding on New Haven. Oh, boy. Now, what do you do if you're Luke Amstutz? Do you make a third and eight, or do you take the penalty? That's, you, they got burned on a second long earlier. They're going to take the penalty, it okay. looks like. They will take the yardage. I think it, it, my thinking here, Jim, let's just say, I mean, if you're sitting here and it's third and eight, if they get three yards, I mean, that, that's almost an extra point. <laughs> so, I mean, if they don't, I mean, you get the two plays here, but regardless, this is a much tougher field goal. I know the field goal does terribly much for New Haven, but. On. Here's Williams throwing, and it is incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, that's why you take the yardage. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of where I stand on that. Kind of get to Williams here, biggest play of the night. Because, I mean, if they just ran it there, if they get the, you know, four or five, and if they get the first down, then they get, it was a really smart decision there to take the yardage. It's kind of like when you're playing blackjack and you got 12. Do you take a card? <laughs> you know, Jim, I'm going to be honest, I never played blackjack. Oh, you never played blackjack. Never okay, blackjack. good. <laughs> don't gamble. I, 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 Save I don't. your money. I try. I try. I, I was in a, uh, I'm in a fantasy football league, and if you get the least amount of points, you have to give up $5. I had to give up $5 a couple weeks ago, and I've been upset about it ever since. $5 is nothing. I know. <laughs> That's why I don't gamble. <laughs> All right. Well, third down and 20 now for New Haven. Line the gain is the four. Third and 20. Down two scores. Williams steps up and fires, and it is nearly intercepted at the five-yard line. Fourth down. Are they going to go for it is the question. I mean, that was close. Oh, yeah. boy. Can you talk about a game changer? Scott almost got the pick. Fourth down. Down 21-7. New Haven in a position. They got to go for it. Absolutely. 2.01 to go third quarter. They may not have a whole lot of possessions left. East Noble 21, New Haven 7. It's been a nice drive for the Bulldogs, but it is stalling in the red zone. They need the four. Fourth and 20. This may be the ball game. Williams fires. No, he'll run. He can't find a man open. He's over the line of scrimmage. He has to keep the football now, and he's driven back. And East Noble's defense comes up with a big stop. Oh. That was a really tough play here for Williams. And I, I didn't get the best look at the coverage. Looks like, take a look here at the track chat line performance. Hold on, we got a lot of commotion. Oh, got an injured player. That's what I thought the commotion was. My apologies. But take a look here. They're only rushing three, Jim. And so that's a lot. They got three linebackers back there on a three wide out set. I mean, if you see right here, he has a man right there in the middle, a linebacker at about the 15. I mean, he had nowhere to throw that thing, Jim. I'm not sure if, if I could take one more look here at this lineup once the replay extinguishes. Take a look here. This looks like they, I think the one disagreement I do have with this play called Jim, it appears they only have three receivers out here. You see one, two, three. I would have liked to take a guy off the line and have a fourth wide receiver out there to run across or something, or maybe even go a five wide using three receivers right there. And I understand that you're missing your best target. Well, the cheering died down quickly as we have an East double player shaken up with a minute 52 to go in the third quarter. But now he's up and being helped towards the sidelines, and I cannot see a number as he's favoring his right shoulder and he's his left arm is blocking the number and I don't want to say who it is unless it's absolutely confirmed but now he's being uh, looked at by the trainers and it's a uh, first down for East Noble at their own 25 yard line their defense coming up with a big stop deep in their own territory keeping it a two possession game Again, I cannot see that young man's number. 52? Yeah, it is. All right. First down. Running play. And a big chunk. 
18 yards out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Mosley, the shaken up player for East Noble, by the way, was number 52, Tin Parks. And he looks to be all right here on the nearest side. Again, going no huddle on first down. East Noble keeping the ball on the ground. They want to shorten up the game as much as possible. And they got five yards on that play. Yeah, it's like what you mentioned when we were debating if they were going to hit the field goal or not. And it's like what you said. I mean, if, if you're New Haven, you, you don't believe you have very many possessions left, Jim. I mean, one, maybe two if you're lucky, and you're down two possessions. Balls at the Knights, 48. Second down and five right down here below us. We've had no scoring here in the second half, and that's a first down as Reinbold rumbles for eight, uh, seven yards. I mean, he's hard to take down, and this running back room is special, Jim. In every game we've seen from him, they've just played spectacularly. The chains are moved. The clock is down to 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. All the scoring has taken place in the first half. East Noble on top, 21-7. Off balance side, they swing it out on the left flat. It's caught. Crail to the 35, inside the 30, all the way down to the New Haven 26 yard line. 20 yards on that pickup. I mean, man, how much yardage can you get? They line up here with only two wide receivers. They run a kind of a semi pistol and they get him out of the backfield. Great blocking downfield. He just kept going. He kind of slowed up there and beat his man around the corner. Talk about a game changer. Now this is, it's up to the East Noble offense here and it, to avoid a penalty. 34 seconds to go, third quarter. They're back to a running attack. And they got a, maybe a yard. That might be the last play of the third quarter. Well, no. Clock has stopped. And something after the whistle, perhaps. A little bit of pushing. Chili running a little hot right now? Uh, I'd say so. <laughs> Motion's got to be running high right now. If you look right here, Jim, at about the 21 yard line. Oh. Flag came in after the play. Personal foul on New Haven. I think it's offsetting. It's not. Oh, Ooh. my. Ugh. I know they're frustrated. I know New Haven's frustrated, but you got to keep your poise. Yeah, look at right, right there at the 20-yard line. Just kind of motions are running high. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving. Oh. 19 first downs for East Noble. That's nine penalties against New Haven for 65 yards. East Noble's been penalized three times for 15 yards. First down for the Knights at the New Haven 13-yard line. Will they let the clock run out? Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds, and they're in no hurry. Three seconds, two seconds, one second, that will do it. We'll switch ends of the field. Nobody scored in the third quarter after three. East Noble 21, New Haven seven. We're back in just a moment. Sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. East Noble. The East Noble Knights leading the New Haven Bulldogs, 21 to seven. East Noble, 12 minutes away from handing New Haven their first loss of the season. Leo was uh, beating uh, Columbia City by a rather lengthy margin. I didn't write down the score you told me earlier for Leo. 
uh, 40 no, 47. Okay. Here's Reinbold off the left side on the opening play of the fourth quarter, and he just refuses to go down. Reinbold picks up five more yards. He's getting close to 100 yards rushing. So Leo 40-7 to seven over Columbia City. And they're announcing that score to a much fanfare right now. And when they announce this East Noble score at, uh, at Leo, there will be a lot of cheering. Looks like we're heading towards a three-way championship unless New Haven can rally here in the final quarter. Reinbold stacked up, still fighting, and he managed to get a couple of yards. Man, I tell you what, Reinbold might be a candidate for our player of the game. Can we give it to a whole running back room? <laughs> we, we might as well. We can do that. We have that power. Ball's at the five. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. It's a two-man democracy over here. <laughs> Crail is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And the tackle made by Chris Stewart. He's excited about it, too. <laughs> well, he, he's made some fine plays defensively tonight for New Haven. Well... You can kick a field goal here and make it a three-possession game if you're East Noble. Or not, I guess. No risk it, no biscuit, Jim. Fourth and four. They're going for it. They might just be trying to bait them offside. Play clock's down to seven, down to six. Brassel goes under center. No, yep, they're going to bait them. And there's the timeout taken by East Noble. We'll keep it here. We're down to 10-14 left in regulation. East Noble leads 21 to four. Sprague will come out now and try a field goal. Let's see, the line of scrimmage is the seven. So this will be a 25 yard attempt. It's a, it's a big one. This will make it a three score game. All the scoring taking place in the first half. And this young man for East Noble, Alex Sprague, he's a junior, 5'11", 175 pounds. He's been one of the uh, better place kickers in the state of Indiana this year. I'll go ahead and say that. 25-yard attempt. Angle to the left. The wind uh, still going pretty good from the press box side of the field towards the New Haven side, blowing at about 15 miles an hour. Sprague 0 for 1. He missed a 41-yarder earlier. This one is much closer. 3 of 5 on field goals this year. And it's spotted. It's booted. It's in that direction. And the kick is good. A 25-yard field goal for Alex Sprague. A new score on the board. East Noble 24. New Haven 7. We'll step aside and come back in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. A 25-yard field goal for Alex Sprague. He's now four out of six on field goals this year. By the way, his longest kick, his longest field goal this season, 43 yards. And that field goal makes it a 17-point lead, a three-possession game with 10 minutes to play. Here is a fumble on the handoff on the kick. And... That kind of sums up the night right there for New Haven. Bates has to fall on the ball, and the Bulldogs have to start deep in their own territory, needing three scores in 10 minutes. Hey, you talk about uh, being a little cute. It's kind of, they, they, they're trying to fake him out there, and it just, I mean, it just 
didn't work. <laughs> no other way to put it. Best thing you can do there really is just to put that one upfield a little bit. All right, New Haven now really up against it. Down 24 to 7. First down from their 18. Williams calls his own number, has some room off the right side, gets away from a guy, steps out of bounds to the 23 after a gain of five. New Haven needs a quick score and then perhaps recover an onside kick somewhere along the way. They spot the ball at the 25. They also need to conserve time. Williams stepped out of bounds there to stop the clock. 9.56 to go. East double 24, New Haven 7. Williams on second and four throws. And what the heck was that? Ball went one way, two guys went the other. I mean, I think the wheels are falling off a little bit. I'll take a look here. I mean, it's like what you said. Just a clear lack of uh, communication here. And nobody was in the vicinity. Line the gain is the 28 for New Haven. They face third down and four. Three receivers to the left. 9.52 remaining. East Noble will look to get that ball back and burn up some clock. Williams calls his own number, gets a first down, and he is so dangerous. He gets up to the 36 yard line after a gain of 12. First down, number 13 for New Haven. Ball is at the 36. Clock is moving, 9.37 to go in regulation. First down for New Haven at their own 36-yard line. Three receivers to the left. New Haven's got to have to pick up the pace here a little bit. Williams rolling to his left. He throws, and it's incomplete at the first down marker. Biddle broke up that pass. That'll bring up second down. Stops the clock with 9.22 left. But boy, New Haven took a lot of time getting in between plays there. They, yeah. they, they got to pick it up. No, they, they're, they're playing like they're down, like they're up right now, and I think that's what they're used to. There has to be some urgency in, in the Bulldogs' offense right now. Here's Williams throwing on the far side, dropped. Third down. Pass intended for Starks. Third and ten. You talk, you talk about urgency. I, I, I want to see Starks fight for this one a little bit, Jim. It looks like he just, once it hit his hand, and he felt a hand in there. It kind of just got deflected. <coughs> Line the games to 46 with 9.17 left. East Noble ahead, 24-7. The Knights can start to smell it here a little bit if they can get a defensive stop. Obviously, four down situation. Williams throws into a crowd. It's intercepted. A flag is down. This may be coming back. Out of bounds at the New Haven 25, but this interception may be coming back. This could be P.I. against the East Noble defense. Well, we'll check out the flag here. The officials will talk it over. Pass interference on East Noble. So New Haven maintains possession. That'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. If you're, on, if you're on purple, you're thinking finally a break. Gotta take advantage of it if you're New Haven. 9.08 remaining, as Jerry Reed said a few years ago. There's, there's a long way to go and a short time, time to, to get, get there. there. That's my dad's favorite movie. I know he'll appreciate that one. I always like Fred in that movie, Fred. Oh, me, me too. Yeah. Uh, Fred, I, I don't got time for this, Fred. You can't, you can't be swimming right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the ball is at the 49. Great movie. 49 of East Noble. First down, New Haven. 9.08 remaining. And it's Bates off the left side. Bates has stopped after a gain of two. And the clock keeps rolling. We go under nine minutes. East Noble 24, New Haven 7. I guess we can say it now. Tick, 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 tick. Second and eight for New Haven at the East Noble 47. 
They're just taking way too much time in between plays. Yeah. Second down and eight. Bates again, flag comes in. Bates has a first down, but this may be coming back as that flag was thrown in the area of holding. Clock is stopped with 8.27 remaining. Boy, I see the body language for the New Haven players. Some shoulders are slumped right now. It's hands on hips, it's not a good look. Yeah, you know, this has gotta to be tough for them, but you know, Morale is a huge thing, and yeah, it's got to be tough for him. I'm not sure if you look down right now, Jim, at the uh, 27. You know, Mylon Graham's kind of pacing right now. We talked about how he must be feeling right now on that sideline. Well, we have offsetting penalties there, Carson, so that play didn't happen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a figment of our imagination. That's right. It was all a dream, Pam. It was all a dream. <laughs> Second and eight for New Haven at the East Noble 47. We're down to 8.15 remaining. Right now the clock is East Noble's 12th man, and that pass is nearly intercepted. Woo, that would have been good night nurse if that pass had been picked. Third down now for New Haven. Third and eight at the East Noble 47. Clock is stopped with 8.10 remaining. Line the gain is to 39 for New Haven. They need three scores in a matter of eight minutes and 10 seconds. Ball is at the East Noble 47, third down and eight. Three receivers, two to this side, one to the left, one setback. Play clock at five, at four, three, two, one, and it runs out. That's gonna be delay of game. They're, they're New Haven's just incredibly undisciplined right now. I can't believe they get a delay of game. As McEnroe said a few years ago, you cannot be serious. <laughs> uh, as one of my favorite broadcasters, uh, Hawk Carlson, Ken the Hawk Carlson said, oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Well, now they're behind the markers. Third and 13. Williams. Cannot find anybody open. Now throws downfield, and it's out of bounds. Incomplete, fourth down. This is a tough situation. I think, I mean, you have to go for it, but you're giving East Noble the ball. I mean, in their side of the field, if you don't convert, and I mean, that, that could be, uh, as you yeah. aforementioned, good night, nurse. Well, the line the gain is the 39. New Haven needs 13 yards right now, or else that's it. Down 24 to seven. We've only had a field goal by Sprague. That's been the only scoring in the second half. Defenses have dominated since halftime. Fourth and 13, three receivers to the left. Williams sets up a screen and it's incomplete through the hands of Washington. And that's a microcosm of this night for New Haven. East Noble will take over on downs with 7.59 to go. It's at the New Haven 48 yard line. First down for East Noble. The Knights on top, 24 to seven. And they're eight minutes away from handing the number three team in the state in class 4A, their first loss of the season. And more than likely, uh, and it would be a three-way tie for the championship in the Northeast State. And it's a running play to the 42-yard line. Reinbold rumbles for six more yards. Diaz made the tackle for New Haven. The ball is at the Knights 42-yard line. So it looks like... Uh, New Haven, East Noble, and Leo will share the Northeast Eight Championship. We'll bring Oprah in. You get a trophy, and you get a trophy, and you get a trophy. Flag is down. Reinbold is stopped at the 39. We'll check out the flag. And the last thing Luke Amstutz wants right now, the East Noble coach, is for that clock to be stopped. With a 17-point lead, false start against East Noble. That'll be the fifth penalty against the Knights for 35 yards. 
Uh, there's a famous hockey call. And uh, it was the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Boston Bruins. And he said, oh, the Maple Leafs will win this game and barring a uh, catastrophic collapse. And, well, would you know it? Oh, yeah. The, the, Leap, the Maple Leafs blew it. <laughs> that was like 10 years ago, game so. seven. Right. Yep, yep, yeah, they yep. lost a 4-1 to lead in the last 10 minutes. Yep. So, obviously. Well, he, the, Maple no Leafs, the Maple Leafs doing Maple Leaf things. <laughs> the more things change, the more they say. Kind of like the Cubs, you know. <laughs> Oh, there's a running play on second and nine. Wow, I thought that guy left way too early, but no flag. And that's going to be a first down. Reinbold over 100 yards rushing now. We're going to give him 24 on that carry. And I got him for 118 yards. First down number 20 for East Noble. We're down to 650 left in the game. I hit the flag button. I thought for sure he was way offside. Well, no flag thrown in the field. And again, we're back to the blue shirts, pushing the white shirts back. I know a couple of years ago, Frank Wright, former head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, they were a game away from the postseason. He said, he said that he didn't want any scores announced or any scores on the oh, yeah. on the uh, Jumbotron. So, but I, I imagine that's not the case at Leo tonight. I'm pretty sure there's a pretty elated sideline. Mosley carried the ball on the last play. He carries it again, has a first down inside the 10 to the 9. And so I got Mosley with 65 yards, Reinbo with 118, Crayo with 57. That's over 200 yards rushing tonight. And you got to give the props to the offensive line too. When you get over 200 yards rushing, the offensive line, are, they're doing their job. They've been in a good rhythm all night long. First and goal from the 9. East Noble leading 24-7, to seven, looking for a little icing on the cake here with less than six minutes to play, and they're in no hurry whatsoever. They're going to take all the time they can. Five seconds in the play clock, four, three. They get it off in time, and it's a gain of about three yards for Mosley. I mean, this is nothing fancy. Just pound that ball in between the tackles. This is, this is old-school football right now. Yeah, I mean... Some, some teams in the professionals just don't seem to understand this. This is exactly what East Nome needs to be doing right now, Jim. Just stand around, take a couple snaps, burn 30 seconds, run a couple yards, stand around, burn 30 seconds. Continue to make that clock be your 12th man. Or for the Bears, just start throwing it downfield randomly. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes to go. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Well, they did win last they night. They did, finally. It's a running play off the right side. Mosley looking for the end zone. Not quite there, but he got down to the one. It'll be third down from the one. I think they'll take that extra 30 seconds. And they can burn some more time off the board. Down to 440. 24-7. East Noble leading. Plenty of time on the play clock. And we're going to have a three-way tie for first place in the Northeast State. Leo, New Haven, East Noble will share the championship. Ball is at the two, we'll say. Third down and goal. Branzo hands it off. A late handoff, but it's a touchdown. Give that man six points. Icing, meet the cake. That comes with 4.07 to go in the game. Mosley got the touchdown. So that's his second touchdown of the night. And uh, his fifth of the season. Sprague to try the extra point. He was 32 of 33. On PATs entering this game, and a flag is down. As yeah, so it looked like the snap was bobbled. Now let's check out the penalty flag. And this penalty is against East Noble for a false start. Going to make it a little bit harder on him. Let's see. Mosley has booted three extra points tonight. 
So 35 of 36 for the year as we stand right now. He'll have to kick this one from the 15, so a 25-yard extra point. It's in that direction, and the kick is good. Bang! New score on the board, 4.07 to go in the game. East Noble 31, New Haven 7. We're back in just a moment. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now. and the Yeah. Welcome back, everybody to East Noble High School. The East Noble Knights, four minutes and seven seconds away from handing New Haven their first loss of the season. The Knights have dominated tonight. What a performance. They lead 31 to seven. Here's the boot. And it's over towards the far side, taken to the 13. Bates fumbles the handoff again. Second straight time that's happened. And he has to cover up the ball the 17 yard line. Hey, before we go any further, our thanks to Athletic Director Nick David and his staff here at East Noble High School for all their cooperation. Uh, we've been here several times this year, Carson, and we are treated so well here at East Noble. And uh, the pizza's great. Yes. You know, uh, we're fed well. And again, our thanks to Nick David. Boy, I remember when he played basketball at East Noble. That's how old I am. Played for Marty Johnson back in the 90s. All right, the ball's at the 17-yard line. First down for New Haven. And it's a running play, and finally they get something on the ground as uh, Stewart carried the ball to the 25. It'll be second down and two for New Haven. 3.45 remaining in the contest. East Noble 31, New Haven 7. So East Noble... Starting to build some momentum now for the postseason. Back-to-back -back big wins over Columbia City and New Haven by lopsided margins. Here's a pass caught at midfield. Washington makes the catch, and he's down short of the 50-yard line, a gain of 24 in the play. And New Haven, despite the lopsided score, is still fighting hard. But this is going to be too little too late for the Bulldogs. Down to 318. Left in the game, first down, New Haven at their own 49. They trail 31 to seven. Three receivers. Williams has time, fires down the middle, caught for another first down. Well, Hardy made the catch there, a gain of 20 yards. And this was the, I mean, I know they're playing against prevent defense, but I mean, this was what This is the New Haven offense we were expecting to see tonight. They've been held to seven points so far. Under three minutes to play. Ball's at the East Noble 32-yard line. First down. In a hurry-up offense. Williams rolling to his left. Throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. Inside the 15-yard line. Pass too high for his attendant receiver. Stops the clock with 2.39 to go. That was the 26th pass in the game for Williams. Brazos only thrown the ball four times in comparison. Brazel has 61 yards uh, passing. We'll have to get out the calculator to fig figure up the rushing totals for East Noble. They've gone over 200 yards rushing tonight by our unofficial count. On second and 10, Williams' pass incomplete. Third down. Third 
So third down now for New Haven, third and 10 at the East Noble 32. Scott, the antenna receiver there, number 11. Clock is stopped with 2.35 to go. Three receivers to the left. Gonna be a long, quiet bus ride back to New Haven for the Bulldogs. Here's Williams, Williams in trouble. Williams is still alive, he got away. Now throws, and he's got a wide open receiver. And to the goal line, just short of the goal line. It'll be first and goal there, as the reception was made by Trey Starks. All right, how about a couple highlights before the night's over? And man, he just kept going. This is a long play. Kind of got held up in between two guys and just got out of it. Good First, job. go ahead, Carson. Good job of the wide receivers to keep going and not get up on that play. Try to run a pick play, didn't work. And that brings up second down. I'm sure the Seattle Seahawks would uh, advise against that play. 2.09 to go. 31-7, East Noble, and you know this defense, they got some pride. They want to prevent this score here for New Haven, although the issue has been settled. Second and goal from the one. New Haven putting together a nice drive here. Let's see if Bates gets the handoff, number two. He does. And he's driving towards the end zone. Give that man six points. Touchdown, New Haven. Bates gets his ninth touchdown of the season. And that comes with 2.05 left in the game. New Haven showing some pride there. Not quitting. They still managed to march the ball down the field. And let's see if they go for two here now. A two-point conversion would make it a two-possession game once again with 2.05 to go. No, they're going to kick it. They are going to kick it, and it's a Flores. Flores is listed as the place kicker. And it's going to be a fake, and it's going to be caught for the two-point conversion. Hardy made the catch, and the pass was thrown by Washington, who was out there holding, and the two-point conversion is good. So a new score, 31-15 East Noble. We're back in just a moment. It's always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent, and it is just truly outstanding. And I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now, and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just, it's really, it's really cool. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260 266 4007 for more. Welcome to the summit. Welcome back, everybody, to East Noble. New Haven not going quietly. They have just scored a touchdown and tacked down the two point conversion. East Noble 31, New Haven 15, and we expect an onside kick from the Bulldogs. East Noble has 10 guys between the 40 and 50 yard lines. Bates taking it in from a yard out, and then they hooked up on the two point conversion on the fake extra point attempt. Hardy catching the two point pass from Washington. And New Haven still needs two possessions, two touchdowns, a couple of two point conversions and they still gotta get an onside kick. Here we go. And that ball is loose and New Haven has the football. Perfectly executed onside kick by the Bulldogs as it's recovered by 
a Johnny Washington with 2.03 to go. We'll find a way to keep it interesting. I mean, it's going to take it's going to take a miracle at this point, but uh, there they're was keep, they're keeping it interesting. There was that Texas State championship game back yep. in the eighties. No, that's what you're talking about. The good golly Miss Molly game. That's what I call it. Those announcers were a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> and they came back. They took the lead, and then the other team that had blown the big lead returned the kickoff for a touchdown. Yep. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. Oh, or Google it, kids. <laughs> All right, New Haven's got the ball back with 2.03 to go. Three receivers to the left. 31-15, New Haven. Williams looking, scrambling, throwing, and it's almost intercepted. Ooh, that would have been good night, Nurse. Risky throw there. Clock has stopped with 1.57 to go. That was the 30th pass in the game for Williams. Second down and 10 for New Haven. The ball's at the East Noble 39. New Haven, uh, if they're going down, they're going down with a fight. They're going out on their shields. Three receivers on the left. And Donovan Williams back to throw. He wants it all right now. That's up for grabs. It's caught at the five-yard line. Give that man six points. Touchdown, New Haven. And Hardy with the catch. 39-yard touchdown pass. Holy smokes. Don't hang up the phone yet, Mabel. They got to go for two. 31-21. Oh, my gosh. My goodness. James Hardy, the fourth, 6'3", senior. And here we go for two points. This will make it a one-possession game. Williams throws, and he's got his man in the corner. He dropped it. Oh, oh he was trying to find Washington in the corner, but it's broken up, incomplete. With 1.48 to go, 31-21 East Noble. We'll be back in just a moment. Sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC. Financing available. Don't wait. Call us today. Well, Donovan Williams just threw his second, touch his second touchdown pass of the game. His 18th of the season. 39 yards to James Hardy, the fourth. That was Hardy's third touchdown catch of the season. And we anticipate another onside kick here from New Haven. Formation much different this time. Peranza, well, he perfectly executed an onside kick a few moments ago. New Haven has scored two touchdowns in a span of 17 seconds. 1.48 to go. Small gap right there on the end. It's not going to target it. Uh oh, they're offside. We'll do it again, apparently. I'll start. New Haven will be pushed back five yards. And they'll try it from the 35 now. Thirty-one twenty-one East Noble. New Haven trying to put together the miracle comeback of all miracle comebacks. They need two possessions. So that two-point conversion that failed. It looks so big right now. What a big difference that makes. We've got New Haven with all their timeouts left. East Noble has two remaining. 
Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if they don't get this, if they're going to take all three timeouts and, I mean, do everything they can. But if even if they get this. Here we go, a squibber. It's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, I think I make them kick it this time. <laughs> I think if I'm East Noble, I take the football right now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we'll see what happens here. I imagine they're gonna run it. I don't think I think New Haven would use those timeouts. I don't know. I don't know if they want to drag this game on and hope for a miracle. I think that was their miracle opportunity there. 148 remaining. I mean, you also risk the turnover when you start running it. Yeah, I think. I think I'd use that timeout. What does Coach Amstutz want to do? Is he going to take the penalty? I don't know. Well, oh, he's going to take it at the 40. All right, he'll take yeah. it right there at the 40-yard line. And it does not look like we'll have any more onside kicks. East Noble's offense comes out onto the field, looking to burn off the final minute and 48 seconds. That's why you got to play right to the final whistle. Boy, lots of credit, though, to the Bulldogs of New Haven for uh, not giving up here in the final few minutes. I mean, 31-7 was the score, and it looked like it was all done, but New Haven got a couple of quick touchdowns, and here's a running play, and again, this East Noble offense, the running game has been unstoppable tonight. First down for the Knights. Yeah, that should about do it. I don't think they're going to take the timeouts now. <laughs> Reinbold. Picking up a nice chunk again, 23 yards. That puts him at 141 for the night on 22 carries. And we're at 125. The clock is running, and New Haven is in no hurry to stop the clock. And it looks like a couple more snaps, and we'll be done. 115 to go, and the ball's at the New Haven 37-yard line. First down for East Noble. Another running play to the nearest side, and they stay in bounds. That's huge to keep that clock moving. Reinbold, the ball carrier, and New Haven decides to call a timeout. Well, okay, there you go. And that leaves them with two. So the clock is stopped with 101 to go. Why don't we step aside very quickly? We're back in just a moment. Back here at East Noble, Wayne now has a 18 to 12 lead over Northside in the fourth quarter at Chambers Field. Reinbold up the middle, Reinbold close to another first down. Got it. That's at the 27, looks like he can move the sticks. I think that might do it for all this time. So first down for East Noble, we're under a minute and the clock is moving, 52 seconds. And I think we'll snap it one more time and call it a night. Snyder leads Dwenger 33-13 in the fourth quarter at Shields Field. So there's, there's a big win for Snyder. And that looks to be the final play of the game. Nobody is in any hurry. In fact, the two teams start to form their handshake line and we will have no more football here tonight in East Noble. That's all there is. There ain't no more. The East Noble Knights defeat New Haven and force a three-way tie for the championship in the Northeast Eight. New Haven loses for the first time this season and on Apple Fest weekend in Kendallville, your final score, East Noble 31, New Haven 21, We'll come back with a final recap in just a moment.
Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Welcome back, everybody, to East Noble one final time. Jim Mezo here along with Carson Watkins and Matt Jackson. Leo defeated Columbia City. Is that a final? Yes. 51-7. Okay. So Leo defeats Columbia City 51-7. Here in Kendallville, East Noble defeats New Haven 31-21. So the Northeast State winds up in a tie. You get a trophy, you get a trophy, and you get a trophy. New Haven, East Noble, and Leo will share the championship with five and one conference records. The Knights now six and two overall. New Haven drops to seven and one as East Noble won here tonight. They never trail. They defeat New Haven 31 21. Carson, time to name our player of the game. And, uh, you know, we're kind of debating amongst the three running backs for East Noble, but I think hey, when all is said and done, you've got to give that to. Uh, Tyson Reinbold, the senior, had an outstanding night, um, ran the ball hard all night long. I had him with 24 carries for 151 yards. So Tyson Reinbold, congratulations, is our player of the game. Yeah, he had a really great game. And, I mean, just the running backs just absolutely destroyed them. And then they, they got... They got torched all night. Uh, it's going to be a long bus ride home for the Bulldogs. But a good effort there at the end. It was just a little too little, too late. And uh, by our count, almost 300 yards rushing tonight for East Noble. Amazing. And a lot of credit also has to go to the offensive line. Uh, Brazel has 61 yards passing. He only threw it four times. Uh, New Haven, uh, they had 52 yards for Bates. Williams passed for 176 yards. Washington had six catches for 61. Penleys did in New Haven tonight, 10 of them for 70 yards. Six penalties against East Noble for 40 yards. Just one over, turnover, that was by New Haven. And uh, East Noble wins it by 10, 31-21. So one more week, Carson, for the regular season, and then we get ready for sectionals. Of course, the sectional draw is coming up on Sunday. Well, that's pretty much the story here tonight in Kendallville. Hope you enjoyed uh, our live stream or if you're watching in the archive. Again, uh, your final score here in Kendallville, the East Noble Knights 31, the New Haven Bulldogs 21. On behalf of Carson Watkins and our cameraman Matt Jackson, I'm Jim Measle saying have a good night, everybody. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so uh, I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", six, 6'4", six, to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. 
To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rats basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952, when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency.